What is going on everyone? I'm here with my little brother. It's the first time all year he's been in a video with me. And for some reason he feels it's necessary to hold a bat in the middle of a video. Yep. But that's another story. Um, from now on guys, I'm not going to do recaps every single game or after every single series. From now on, it's going to be every Friday I record one video that's like a week in review. It's about the series we played, about how we played and all that other stuff because I work way too many hours and I just don't have enough time and enough to, I only get two days off a week I mean I'm working 43 hours a week I just don't have enough time to do videos every single you know every third day you know this kid knows too he works a lot of hours oh, yeah. as well so we start off with the Royal Series in game one Irvin Santana how'd that boy look man he looked good I'm not gonna lie he looked good he shut us down but the Tigers offense looked flat though didn't they oh yeah you could tell that they had a nice little lengthy delay, uh, not playing anymore, and it was just like playing the Giants all over again. The Tigers sweep, and they don't play for a little while, and what happens? They suck. Really, they only had like two or three hits that whole game. Yeah, Irvin Santana looked really good, but Anibal, for the way he pitched, because I think he had like four walks this game, mm -hmm. for him to not only give up one run, and I think it was like one in the second inning, you know, that that was... I, I don't even know how you can lose one to nothing without scoring. I don't like shutouts. It's annoying. They've been shut out like four times. Well, I don't mind year. shutouts if it's, as long as it's not against us. But I'm saying, though, they've been... Annoying. The Tigers have been shut out like four or five times this With year. With that offense, they shouldn't be shut out. Yeah, I know. Because they went a whole year last year, remember, without getting shut out? It was nuts. Yeah. But you got to tip your cap to Irvin Santana. He's been pitching pretty good this year. And the bullpen was great this game, too, because they pitched three scoreless innings. And then game two, Justin Verlander up against J uh, Jeremy Guthrie. Jay Guth. And the Tigers gave Verlander a couple runs early. And yet, yet again. Both pitchers got tattooed. Yeah. They both did pretty bad. Although, to Guthrie's defense, in the, I think it was the fourth or fifth inning, his defense played really bad or whatever. Getz had that one ball where he tripped up. And then... Uh, I think uh, their second baseman or someone bobbled the ball to Hosmer. No, it was a tamper to Hosmer, and Hosmer tripped or whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And Guthrie was supposed to cover the bag, and Hosmer went to die for it, which let Avila get that hit or whatever. You know, and it's it's been the same Verlander. You know, his velocity was good this game. His fastball command was decent, but his secondary stuff is just not there. Guys are sitting fastball. His fastball life is just not there anymore. You know, when even when he has his velocity, there's just no movement on it. It's flat. It's just not good. Yeah, because the recent start of Chicago, he was throwing 97. So yeah, I guess he hit 99 twice yesterday. It's just not moving. It's just it's not straight. moving, and it's just straight. And, you know, this is a lost season as far as I'm concerned for Verlander. This is a transitional year because I keep saying this. Everyone's like, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? They found what was wrong with his mechanics, obviously, because he's hitting high 90s in games again. But... I typically, I really, really think that this is all mental right now with him, and he's in a transition. Everyone's like, "Well, what's wrong with him?" I think you know he's changing the way he pitches from a guy that's going to blow you away with a hundred in the middle innings of the game to a dude that's going to figure out how to get quicker outs and not strike out as many dudes. And I think he's trying to do this for the long run. So you know, I take this year as a wash for Verlander, and it, it's just I think next year is, he's going to finally put it all back together and, and become a, a good effective starter again. But right now, it's it's just a wash with him. And then game three was Dougie Fresh against James Shields. And you got to feel bad for James Shields, man. This guy. I was at work, so I, I didn't see it. This guy is 4 and 7 while posting an ERA of 324, 122 strikeouts, and a 1.23 whip. I mean, he thought he was leaving the, the Rays to go to a team that could score him some runs. And it's been the polar opposite again, you know? The, the the Royals are typically a team that don't score many runs, but or don't score don't pitch very well, but then scored a lot of runs. And now it's completely flipped, and I just feel bad for him. But Fister pitched a gem, and then we move on to the White Sox series. Tigers go into Chicago, and they rattle off four straight wins, starting with the game on Sunday when they beat Kansas City to take one of three. Dominant pitching this entire series until Verlander. I mean, the the starters are allowed like. Four earned runs over three games against the uh, against the the White Sox. It was great, and then Verlander comes out and sucks. Uh, so what are you? Gonna, that's all I really gotta say about him. But the Tigers pitched absolutely great. Their offense was great. Uh, Prince Fielder finally woke up a little bit. He had a couple big hits. He had some RBIs. The series had a home run for the first time in a long time, really. Um, 
And Max Scherzer, man, he's just been so great. Porcello has been great. Annabelle had a much better start uh, than he did in Kansas City. And, you know, and it was a big game, too, because, uh, you know, we finally got to beat up on the White Sox. We put some more ground between us and Cleveland. Mm, it was three and a half last time I checked. Yeah. It was yesterday. And you know what else I'm happy about that series? Finally over 10 games over 500. I don't know what it was. Every time we'd get over 10 games under over 500, we lose two straight. And then we went two straight again, lose three straight. I mean, it was just a, a merry-go-round of what the fuck. So, like I said this past, uh, like I said this past week, not bad. You take three or four from the White Sox. That's not good. How you, you get beat by the Royals, but the Royals is playing so tough every year. I, I mean, I just don't get it. They play the contenders the hardest. Yeah, normally. they're a pesky little fucking team. That's for sure. Um, injury news wise this week, Omar Infante might be going back on the DL. Uh, this is why Mario and Rod and Pemba are, are Rod Allen and Mario and Pemba are fucking morons. They're like, oh, we were talking to Omar Infante, and he says he's 100%. Read M Live yesterday. Yeah, uh, Omar says, yeah, my leg isn't feeling that good, still my ankle. So said it was still bothering him really bad. He said he came back too soon. Yep. So he's probably going back on the deal. I get to see more Perez. More, but Hernan Perez, man, that kid can play some defense. You got to give him that. Yeah. He can play some defense. Um, this week, for sure, for Tigers, I think we're going to see a move for a bullpen arm because the trade deadline is uh, f five days away. Yeah. Five days away. So this week, for sure, ne next video I make will be when we require someone because Dave Dombrowski is not going to let this bullpen sit the way it is. And if he does, then he's a moron. So tonight, we open up our series with uh, Philadelphia. Him and I are going down there along with a good friend of mine, Anthony. And we're actually going to Tiger Stadium beforehand to play some baseball on the field. Uh, we actually went out and got some new baseballs. He got a brand new baseball glove. And we're ready to you know, play some ball on, on a historic field. I mean, it's absolutely awesome. He's played there uh, last year. We played there a couple times, and it was just great. I mean, how awesome is it to play on that field? It's awesome. You can actually just like stand at home plate or the pitcher's mound and just picture the stadium still built. They have the flagpole and everything. So it's, it's amazing. It's really cool. Um, shout out to Philly fan for life, the guy who actually used to be, or Eagles fan for life, 17, a guy who, uh, actually used to be ultimate Philly fan, uh, until his account got hacked. Uh, he made, like, a little thing talking about how Detroit's a shithole. Uh. Not gonna deny that. I can't no, deny that terrible. it's not ghetto in a lot of spots, uh, that's for sure. It's terrible. It's definitely a, a, a city on, that's been on decline for a long time, but, the downtown portion of it, Woodward Avenue, in the inner city, is actually pretty nice. And everything around Gross Point uh, is pretty nice, too. Um, so we open up the series of Philly tonight. Dougie Fresh, finally I get to go watch him pitch in real life. He's up against Cole Hamels, who's been absolutely atrocious Which this year. Which means he's going to murder us. I know. Watch him pitch an absolute gem against us. No hitter, probably. I mean, Jesus. Um, and then game two is Max Scherzer against Cliff Lee, and I'm really looking forward to that game. That's going to be a good one. Oh, yeah. And then uh, Marcelo, where's Ricky P up against Pettibone. Pettibone. And then to Damn. for the rest of the week, we got Washington. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday I'm kinda mad. closes out the week Dude, against Strasburg the White Sox. Strasburg is pitching. Yeah, Strasburg's Damn, pitching I Tuesday. I would have to go to that game. I know. At least we get to see Strasburg uh, at Comerica. I wish we could go to the game Tuesday as well. I know. That'd be so dope. Go watch Stephen Strasburg pitch. And Harper. Yep. See Harper. So if you're not subscribed to Philly Fan for Life, or I, I, keep, I still call him Ultimate Philly Fan, I'll leave his link down below. Uh, he's a big Phillies fan. And the Phillies this year have not been that good. Uh, you know, I know they're floating around. They've been floating around below or at 500 for a good portion this year. You know, they've underachieved. But, you know, that team's got a lot of people that are old. They're kind of in a transition, what they're doing. Uh, and what sucks is the guy I was looking forward to most, Dominic Brown, on, is on the concussion list or whatever. So he's going to be out for seven days. Really? So, yeah, we don't get to see him play. Aww. But we should get to see Michael Young and – I like John Mayberry Jr. He's pretty uh, cool. No, I'm not too excited. To uh, who else we got? That's really about Jimmy it. Jimmy Rollins. Yeah, Jimmy Rollins. And Who's in their center field? Like, Revere's out, isn't he? Or is he still there? Yeah, he's out still. Yeah, he'd probably kill us. I think it? Darren Ruff's still playing first. Ruff. Those guys too, yeah. He's playing first for Ryan Howard. He's a big beast. Yeah. So that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, like I said, one video a week from now on, guys. We're just recapping the week and stuff. If the Tigers make a trade for a bullpen arm, I'll definitely make a video to tell you my thoughts on the trade. Have a good one, guys. Go Tigers.